what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Nursing Uncharted. I'm Maggie Reichard, your host for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening today. And we have a great conversation for you today. But um, before we get started, I just wanted to let anybody who might be interested in traveling know that AMN has some pretty awesome opportunities right now. Um, AMN is giving away prizes just for applying and following them on Instagram. So head over to their Instagram at AMN Nurse, click the link in their bio, and then click your passport to New Horizons. Fill out their checklist for getting started, and you can win Amazon gift cards and new scrubs and a lot of stuff. So if you're interested in traveling, get that free stuff. I am super excited to get into talking about this realm of nursing today because I think a lot of us inpatient nurses have kind of mulled over the thought of going to outpatient or procedural setting after last year. So today we are going to be talking about the post-anesthesia care unit or PACU. And here to talk about her realm of nursing is Allie Moog. Allie has been a nurse for six years, starting her career in a surgical step down and then transitioning into PACU, where she's been for the last five years. Allie works as a level three clinician and a PRN evening charge nurse. She's very passionate about prairie anesthesia care, and she advocates for giving specialty units a closer look. When she's not at the hospital, she is caring for her three adorable her adorable three-year-old and one-year-old daughters while her husband attempts to work from home. So Allie, welcome to the show. I'm excited to be yeah, here. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having yeah. me. I know, I've, I've thought about Packy a lot in the last, you know, few, six months or so. I know a lot of people that it's have too. It's been the time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm excited to talk yeah. about it. I really am. Yeah. Well... So you ended up in PACU before it was cool, you know, before everybody wanted to shift and move to procedural units. Yes, <laughs> I did. I feel like I got I got in there kind of quick. It was kind of a um I feel like a non-traditional path there as well. Yeah. Um coming out of nursing school, I well actually I was still in nursing school for your your you know your senior capstone, your senior mm-hmm. rotation, whatever they normally call it. I wanted to do something kind of cool and I felt like I hadn't gotten to see certain areas yeah. just because of where my school was. I feel like I, I wanted some different exposure. Mm-hmm. And I was, I remember thinking, I'm looking at this sheet of paper thinking, what is PACU? <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> and, and I was, it was at the hot, like a hospital I wanted to be at. And I was like, let's yeah. try that. And I did. And it, the people there were amazing. They got me to see so many cool things and, I was sad to leave just that small little rotation, um, but that was like the last thing I did in nursing school. And I knew they weren't going to take a new, new, mm-hmm. new grad. So um, went and did my went and did my time and um, did some surgical. It was it was kind of a tough year mm-hmm. for me, and got some experience under my belt. I'm glad I did it. It was super formative for me for nursing. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, Going to step. Yeah, first. I really I learned like. I really learned to hustle out there and that, that was, it can be that rough was really out there. good. And then, yeah, it sure can. It really can. Um, but they had a position open up in the same PACU that I was there as a student. And um, oh. I remember the sa- that day I was thinking, I think I got to get a new job. It's only been a year out of nursing school, but I really think I need a new job. And my preceptor texted me and I was like, oh, well, there you this go. is yeah. meant to be. So, Did she know um, you were I, like that, wanted to be on that unit eventually? I think so. I feel like we we had like a good friendship and um I feel like we she she's my mom's age actually. So I feel like she was kind of looking out mm-hmm. for me in a way. I had come to her with some concerns about my actual job and um and she she said, "Hey, you got to you just got to apply." And sure enough, um for the unit our PACU, uh critical care ex- prior experience was not a requirement. Hmm. So they they put me through the normal critical care classes you would go through if you were going to be a new grad in the ICU. Okay. And then um, at the hospital I work at, we also do pediatric surgery. So I went through the normal PALS certification mm. that um, anybody in a PICU would work um, go through. So gotcha. I really I really started out yeah. fresh. I mean, you kind um, of start. You that's still basically like a new grad, essentially. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, totally. just like a year in. Yeah. <laughs> It was really on the job training for sure. <laughs> I mean, 
a lot of us have done the critical care critical care classes and it's just like you gotta see it. You oh, know? for you sure. Gotta see it to really. <laughs> so I was seeing it. Um, I'm, yeah, you. I'm doing those critical care classes now because I'm moving from med surge to ICU. And like, even, right. you know, it's just, I say this all the time. I'm like, it's amazing to me that new grads like start out doing this stuff. I feel like there's just so much to totally. learn. I'd be so overwhelmed. I can't imagine what it was like yes. starting out as a new grad in the PACU. Yeah, it was a lot. I, although it is like, I like to call it like a specialty unit because not every patient I had was really super critical. Yeah. So that was the kind of nice cushion mm-hmm. of it. Um, it's like, yeah, we did see a lot of intensive care level patients, but then other like pretty yeah, healthy patients. Yeah, kind of a mixed you know. bag. Mm-hmm. It really that is. That kind of brings, yeah. it's so funny because I've never, I mean, nobody really, nurses that don't work in PACU never have a reason to go to PACU. Like it's kind of a place so that true. you've only heard of and you talk, you can talk about it a lot. Like in post-op acute care <laughs> units, you talk about yeah. PACU all the time, but we've never been. So like yep. help me run through like what makes PACU PACU, like what are patient populations and um, like what does a typical day look like type of shifts, all of that. So, yeah, I feel like, I feel like nobody really knows where the PACU is, but a lot of people come from there. Um, I wish we could have like a little, yes. everybody gets a tour and gets a little like orientation to see what actually goes on. Cause it is, it's a really, it's a hop in place. So, um, where I work, we do, we don't do any trauma, um, and we don't do any transplant surgery. So we're okay. doing adult and pediatric surgery, and then pretty much okay. everything that's not trauma or transplant. Yeah. Um, we, because we don't do trauma, we don't have scheduled, you know, nights, evenings. We do emergency surgeries, um, mm. you know, like appendectomies. So like a lot of on-call. Brains. Yes. So stuff like mm. that um, throughout the night, but we don't have anything scheduled for like weekends, nights, that kind of thing. Um, sure, sure. So a normal day is like you come in. Um, our, our, we're staggered. There's no reason really for everybody to show up at the same time in the PACU because everybody in our ORs starts around seven or seven thirty. That's when the surgeons are starting mm-hmm. their surgeries, their first surgery of the day. So we kind of all come in staggered so that we're kind of timing right for when surgeries are coming out. Um, mm. we have 21 ORs, so there's probably like 10 ish nurses there a day and, um, we, it's kind of it's kind of cool, but it, it can be a, a pain sometimes. But our start times are like we could we could come in at seven or seven thirty, eight, eight thirty, nine, ten thirty. Yeah. Um. So that we have enough nurses by the time things are really flowing in a mm-hmm. whole bunch of rooms. Um. So all of the or start at at seven. And you um, can get any type of like is is there like designated areas kind of like there's like special ORs for special you know. Yep. There is. We have a we have a cardiac suite and we have a urology okay. suite, and then everything else is kind of split up between there. So you could have GYN going in one room, laparoscopic, you know, general surgery. We have cardiothoracic going in another room, um, but then for the for PACU nurse, it's I think of our charge nurse as a bit like a a way harder version, but kind of like a hostess, you know, uh, as the charge <laughs> nurse is there. Like, yeah, the switchboard. Hey, Allie, um, yeah. Surgeon so-and-so just called out and that's going to be your patient. So so they're coming out to me. You know, I, I look through their chart, you know, their, their history and that kind of thing and um, kind of prepare myself like you would on the floor, you know, if you're getting mm-hmm. a report from someone. And then they come to me, um, really like the handoff nurse is mm-hmm. um, the nurse anesthetist. That's their patient. Um, so oh. we're working a lot with CRNAs. Um, okay. Those are probably like our closest um, person that we're working with is the CRNA. And then they also come out with their circulator nurse that was circulating in the OR. Okay. Um, so they come and give us a little report, um, mostly really from the CRNA. Um, they're talking about the anesthesia side, and then the circulator really covers the surgical side. Um, sure. And then we kind of get them, get them hooked up to our monitors. Our unit is really unique. Actually, I don't know if our unit's really unique. I think it's unique <laughs> is because we don't have any walls. So all of our patients are separated by curtains. Um, huh. It's kind of like bays. Um, yeah. Like a, a older hospital. So yeah. we, it's kind of nice. So I think it's great. It it really lends to a lot of like team nursing and nurses. Be, we're, we're right next to yeah. each other like all the time. Yeah. So um, a lot of help, 
help people or helping you get your patients settled in. And that's um, good. Is it generally one to one? Yeah. So for an ICU patient, you're only going to have one. A pediatric patient, you'll only have one. And then anything besides that, you're maxed at two. Um, okay. So they really treat it kind of like an ICU level yeah. of care. Um, but um, that changes changes a little bit if your patient, you know, for whatever reason has been there for a really long time, a couple hours, mm. they kind of become like as if they're on the floor, like you're taking care of them above yeah. the unit. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's, we max out for sure. One kid for sure. One ICU patient, um, which is really nice because, you know, you start with one, if you end up with two patients, which happens, um, that's it. You know, you're settled in, you have your people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we do, we're doing a lot of like, um, a lot of pain management. That's probably one of the biggest yeah. things we do. Um, a lot of side effects of anesthesia, mm-hmm. um, drowsiness for one. Yeah, <laughs> trying to wake people up. Um, How long do old- people generally stay down there? Um, it's be- honestly it could be thirty minutes. It could be two hours. It could be five hours. Um, they do a lot of different kinds of anesthesia too, which is I really feel like a unique part of PACU nursing is you're really familiar with anesthesia and what the anesthesia team does. Anesthesia cocktail is really lots of medications and what they do mm. and all that kind of thing. Um, you know, for like a Mac anesthesia monitored anesthesia care, it could be, they could come out and be like, Hey, my name's Gary. And I just had, <laughs> you know, my, my feet worked on or whatever it is. <laughs> Whereas like a general anesthesia they've been under for a couple hours mm. could be a couple hours. Um, yeah. to get them to where they're really stable. We're really looking at um, that their pain is tolerable yeah. um, and that they're arousable, easily yeah. arousable. Um, yeah. and like oxygen sacs. Yes, and- that their oxygenation is, is, is normal. Um, mm-hmm. So normal vital signs, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's a lot shorter of an assessment than you would do on the floor. We're really looking at like yeah. very specific things. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, so it can be really fast. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. It's yeah. It seems like it's just, it's crazy to me that like you will. It's just you will get whatever is whatever is coming. Yeah. <laughs> like all the yeah. types of surgeries. Like or I kind of love that about urology, it. Yes, oncology, and you could have a two year old like, who you know had their appendix removed, and then your next patient after the two year old goes to the pediatric unit, you could have a 92 year old who yeah. had you know, bladder cancer or yeah. something like that. So it really right. is the, the scope of your practice, I feel like is so wide because yeah. you're getting little tiny tastes of pretty much everything. That's wild. Yeah. So what's, what is orientation like then? Like how long do, how long do they give you to learn all of that stuff? So at the time when I started, I was the youngest one in the unit. Um, I feel like it was it was kind of like a first time thing for them to have someone with so little experience. Um, but I'm currently working with people who have worked in PACU for like, well, even at our hospital for like 30, 40 years. Oh <laughs> like, my gosh. Oh, yes. Like really, That's really awesome. long time. So more recently though, I've we've had a lot more people closer to my age coming down from ICU, younger people. Um, so it really kind of depends. We've had we've had multiple people come from a non telemetry background or even mm. ICU background. And it's a good couple months because I feel like you really. Yeah. It's one problem with PACU is you're not going to see the same thing for a little while necessarily. You know, like you might yeah. have an intubated patient. Um, who has a lot of drips and you're really like working things out and working with doctors and trying to get them stable before you take them to their room. But um, that might not happen again to you. You might not get that patient again for a little while. So you really want to get your kind of get that feeling right. So you feel like you're really confident with those skills, especially. Mm -hmm. And then kids, that really throws people for a loop because actually I don't think any of us that I work with have a pediatric background. So Mm -hmm. um, that's all like medications, and, all of yes. that, all of the dosing and everything is completely Vital different. Signs, what's normal for a child? Like, are they crying because they're hurting? Are they crying because they feel so they're weird a, after a anesthesia? child and they're upset? Yeah, yes, they haven't eaten in twelve hours. So it, that kids, I honestly think kids might be harder for some nurses than the the ICU stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it, and then if you had an ICU background, it's usually pretty quick because, um, you know, you're, you're getting the hang of the variety of surgeries, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think a lot of the critical care skills are pretty familiar. Yeah. 
I'm sure you probably see like a lot of EKG changes and stuff after surgery too, with like all yeah. of the anesthetics and everything. Cause like when we do procedures on the floor, it's like, you're like holding your breath and <laughs> waiting, yes. you know, like if you have to like intubate, sedate, paralyze somebody, like you're mm-hmm. all, you know, they could brady you, they could. Yes. More often than not, they're going to see that in the OR, which is kind of nice mm, because okay. they get a little taste of it in the OR. Like yeah. when they first, you know, start the gas or something like that, or they take mm-hmm. the tourniquet off their leg, they could have a bit of an issue, or they're using insufflation in someone's belly, and that can cause a little something. Um, so mm-hmm. they might like tell us about it, and yeah. then you know if they noticed a, a change too like this person wasn't in afib and now they are um we'll kind of mm. have to go down the the path of that you know figuring that out but yeah that's probably one of the biggest things we see that takes somebody up into like a critical care level yeah um sure or people not able to maintain their blood pressure that kind of stuff oh, okay um, gotcha because of anesthesia they're just sleepy what's like a really um like do you have like code situations in the pacu yeah, but honestly, I feel like not as much as you would think. I'm yeah. more often than not, somebody has to be in fairly good shape for a surgeon to want to like take them to surgery, true. right? Very true. So the people that we're going to see that are really sick are um, um, somebody who has free air in their um, abdomen, um, sepsis type stuff. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we get like kind of a fresh sepsis from like um, kidney stones, urosepsis. Hmm. Um, yeah. But in terms of codes, like. It's awesome because the CRNA has been working on that the whole time. It's usually yeah. not like they come here and just like, whoa. We have had yeah. that happen a couple of times. Like somebody has a heart attack or has a clot or something like that that, that just kind of happened after surgery. But usually if someone's not doing well, the CRNAs who are amazing know. are, are mm-hmm. like doing what they need to do as they're bringing the patient to you. So the other thing about a code in PACI, which is kind of – Great is you. You have your people right there. Your your ner- your anesthesiologists, yeah. usually multiple anesthesiologists, actually, um, yeah, are there. One's intubating. One's putting in a central line. One's putting in arterial line. I mean, it's yeah. like they the CRNAs are right there. So I mean, it's really a well oiled machine when that yeah. happens because um, that's just that's just what they do and that's their. Um, that's their niche thing. And then the surgeon's kind of like, you know, yeah, we're, like they're, they're doing their the thing. Next. Yeah. It is a kind of interesting dynamic because you really are working for the surgeon and for the anesthesiologist. So that is kind of a, um, we're kind of right there with both of them, but, yeah. the, but codes, yeah, it is a little scary, but you know, compared to like a floor where you're like having to page somebody or like, yeah, you don't know calls, where they are. Like, yes. It's nice that everybody's just, it's great. They're right, right there. there in I, one I spot. know their I know their extension <laughs> to call them <laughs> to say we're yeah. having a problem. Can you come to the bedside? You're like three three doors down. Can you come over here? Yeah. Um, which is great. Do you feel like those are you have good relationships, like nurses and and you know, higher ups, LIPs, they have good relationships there? I really do. Yeah. I feel like it might be the nature of our unit because we're all like literally working next to each other. Mm-hmm. Um and we're in I'm in a medium large size community hospital so that was one thing i was really looking for actually is like i wanted the doctor to know my name you know i wanted yeah. i wanted that familiarity and um yeah i feel like our unit really has that because they they're they're around they they're super involved um i feel like the relationship with the crna is really important too because mm-hmm. they're setting you up for for success you know if they're patient if they've done a good job at their job our job will be easier um, yeah and that I think that too, like the CRNAs work really hard. They have a they they do a lot of work. The anesthesia the anesthesiologists are like really overseeing things, and they're doing a lot too. But it's they they have. They what have it, good- I guess I really don't. I mean, I just don't have any experience in in OR and procedural stuff. Like, what mm-hmm. is the difference? Like, what can an anesthesiologist do that a CRNA can't do? Or like, you always have an anesthesiologist and a CNRA. C- yeah. RNA in, mm-hmm. so you can't have one without the other. Yeah, we have. So if we have like twenty-one ORs, there's a CRNA in each OR, and then one anesthesiologist will have like five rooms. So they're not okay. actually in okay. each OR during the surgery. They're there for like 
intubation, the CRNAs sure. intubate, can intubate, they do intubate, but, you know, if, if they're really having trouble or if this patient has a, you know, they're looking at if they have an int- weird anatomy or something mm-hmm. like that, they'll be there for that. Um, help them if they need it. Um, and then they're usually there for like wake up in case something happens, they need a second set of hands, but, um, the CR- okay. if, if you've been yes. put to sleep for surgery, it was a, it was a CRNA that was there. Um, that's it's awesome. pretty awesome. They really That's work badass. super close with, yeah, they really is. They work super close with the anesthesia and, and they're great. They're a great team too. We want to take a quick break from this episode to talk about the industry leader in travel nurse staffing, American Mobile, combining the largest network of facilities and providers in the country with top level benefits like higher earning potential, premium health insurance, and 401k matching. American Mobile puts you in the driver's seat of your travel nursing career. Make sure to visit AmericanMobile.com today to discover a world of adventure with American Mobile. That's AmericanMobile.com, the first step towards your next travel nursing adventure. It's so important to have a mutual respect there. That's something that I was looking for as well. And just, yeah. you know, having the whole team know your name and like be on a first totally. name basis. Yeah. Like having that now, I kind of like think about like, I, you know, you don't have that on the right. acute care side. So, there's just so a million much. of you yeah. and there's like a hand and, and you're just very busy and they're very busy. And totally, we're like thinking about so many other things. Like I know what your face is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, you kinda know who me, I but... need to page and I don't always know who's on the other end of that page, right. but I know that it's the resident or whatever. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So true. The only thing that's helpful too, is we have like a standard order set for anesthesia care. So we, I feel like we have a lot of autonomy nice. to yeah. to make the decision. They they've given us, you know, this is how much you can work with, and and we can kind of work within that. Um, is really helpful. I feel like yeah. they they really trust us and to do what we need to do within those parameters. So that's awesome because mm-hmm. that's so frustrating too when like you know what you need and you just need somebody to order it and they're yes. like doing three other things and you're like I just can I just, I yes. give me a little autonomy like yes. trust me a little bit I know what I, I know more than you know what I, I know need. like yeah you know. it's so it's so true <sighs> man so, I know that you said a, you little a little bit um you know, about the culture of PACU, like, do you Mm -hmm. feel like there, and I know you can only kind of speak from your experience on the unit that you're on, but do you feel like there is like a universal culture of PACU? Like, is it generally supportive or I I guess it probably also depends on how it's set up too, whether or not, you know, like, like you said, it's a wing. So you guys are all very connected as opposed to something that is very disjointed, you know, if right. everything was in their own rooms. I'd like to think, yes. I feel like the OR gets a bit of a rep um, for being a little bit like rough and tough and yeah. I don't know. Um, at least that's what I feel like from my experience is that they just like, they kind of just take care of their own and move along. But mm. I feel like for, I don't know what it is about PACU. I feel like maybe we'll come back to this, but at least for me, it's this like idea that you're the first person somebody wakes up to see after like their scariest moment, maybe of their life. I don't know if we feel like there's this like mutual, like it's kind of like an honor to get to wake somebody up and be like, mm. you did it. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you, this is it. You, it's done. Oh, that's um, awesome. it, it really is kind of like a, a sweet thing. Um, so I don't know if it's that or if it's just the people that that I work with, but for the most part, it's a really positive, um, I mean, there's, there's plenty of negatives, but I feel like they're at the end of like a kind of a hard thing. Recovery is next. So like this, this is like a roadblock right here. You're in the recovery room. So, um, I work with a lot, like I said before, like a lot of senior very well experienced nurses too. So I feel like there's something to be said for that, that they just have welcomed us and yeah. teach us a lot. So maybe that too. Um, yeah. As we've got oh, new, new awesome. nurses too. And I just, I want to maintain that. And I feel like it's a sweet thing to have that on a unit. It's kind of rare. So <laughs> I don't know if that's just specifically pack you. It, I can imagine it being tricky to keep that culture because it's a super fast moving pace that you could just kind of like 
have yeah. to keep your blinders on. I was kind on of and- wondering if you just get lost in the shuffle and people get, you know, into their own groove of things and on to the next, but that, that's that really, that can happen. Yeah. But, but not, mm-hmm. I think, you know, we're standing right next to somebody, you know, we can help them, you know, do little tasks and stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. At least you don't have to be yelling down the hallway for somebody to like help you sign your insulin out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. You just like grab somebody from outside yes. the curtain. That's exactly right. <laughs> Ew, come here. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I want to talk about how PACU has worked for your lifestyle because you're a mom of two adorable girls. How has PACU or what has PACU done for a work-life balance for you? Yeah. Well, so I, I started PACU with no kids. So I, I've now experienced full-time PACU. I went part-time after I had my first daughter. Um, and then and now I'm PRN and kind of working all over the place with my, now that I have two. Um, and COVID changed that a little bit too. But I feel like um, in the procedural setting, at least, and especially with PACU, there's this nice, like, it's one thing when you, I feel like maybe this population, maybe there are some people that are thinking about having kids or how does nursing fit into being a mom? Cause mm-hmm. you really go from caring for your kids to like caring for someone other, someone else's kids <laughs> it kind of is like, yeah, you're going from caring to caring. Mm-hmm. I feel like the burnout could be really mm-hmm. almost even higher. Um, you gotta figure out how to care for yourself in the meantime. Yeah. But the thing I love about PACU is that you, I don't have that feeling because I remember it <laughs> sitting in the, <laughs> sitting like in the parking lot thinking like, I know that that guy is still there and I'm going to take care of him today and it's going to be hard like it was yesterday. And you know, you just, you're hyping yourself up a little bit, mm-hmm. but the thing about PACU is nobody that was there yesterday is yeah. there tomorrow. It's a fresh yeah. start. It's clean. It's new. You're not going to take care of the same surgeries necessarily. Yeah. Um, you might have Always the same surgery, totally different person. Your patient's going to have a different personality. Um, yeah. The nice thing about our OR is once it's once you're done for the day, you're done for the day. Um, it doesn't have that like lingering feeling that it just keep you know just when's it, when does it change when you know. Yeah. Um, the tasks are so different, so I feel like for me, like I go and I expect to do something different that day. So it's mm-hmm. not like pass my meds at eight, you know. Um, yeah. Make sure everyone's lunches, you know, like those little things that you do daily. Mm-hmm. We don't do any of that. You know, no one's eating, no one's getting to the bathroom. No, you know, yeah. no one's getting out of bed. It's a completely um, different type of nursing. Yeah. yeah, it really is. So I feel like I still, I, I love it as a mom. I honestly thought I wanted to be a stay at home mom, but now I'm super grateful for my job. Cause I feel like I still get to use that critical side of my brain Yeah, that, you know, I'm, I'm problem solving and mm-hmm. I know I'm good at it and I can like really make people feel good about themselves. And, um, yeah, so I feel like it, the, my perspective on nursing really has changed since becoming a mom. It feels like, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of work on top of my full-time job here at home. Um, Mm. but I really am, I'm thankful for PACU. It it also, the way our unit works, we have a lot of autonomy over our schedule too, because you can come in at, if I wanted to work at 10 AM so I could see my kids in the morning, then I could do that. And, uh, you know, I, I choose to work 12s. That's what works for me. But in our unit, you could work eights, you could work nines, you could work tens. Yeah. Um, I just have stuck to 12s and that, allows me to be at home another day of the week. So yeah, that's awesome. Do you generally get to pick the days that you work too? Like, do you pick your schedule? I do. Yeah, man. This is just a freaking infomercial for PACU. I I hope hope there's not a PACU nurse out there being like, what PACU does she work at? I I mean, I hope that this is, I'm speaking kind of universally, but, um, we do, we do self-scheduling like other units do, but, um, just because that everybody needs to be there at different times, I feel like really opens up some like window of flexibility. It's like, you are not going to be there from, it's not set in stone. You have to be there from eight to eight, you know, yeah. you can, not everybody, not all the patients are going to be there from eight to eight. So, yeah. um, at least for, for us. So that really opens yeah. up like a whole new, I also have a great boss. So, um, well, she really, that, helps. I, that really does help. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I want to know some pack, some, some hashtag pack you problems, like pa- problems that only happen in the pack you. Yeah. Well, you've seen them on YouTube probably. 
you feel like you see like a lot of teenage kids on the, from like wisdom teeth anesthesia oh, and they're like yes. saying crazy stuff and they're <laughs> talking to their mom and they're like FaceTiming their friends and oh stuff my like gosh. that. Those are your patients. That and does all really happen. Time. I find, I found that like the age group that really does that is like, t- like 12 to 18. You like, there's going to be something funny. Yeah, they're going to say something. <laughs> And usually oh it's the gosh. parents sitting next to them being like, I've never heard him talk so much. <laughs> like, he's just like, da, 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 da. Oh. Uh, so there's <laughs> definitely some of those. There's definitely the opposite. Some people wake up like, just like, agitated. Real, and, yes, yeah. Yeah. Like scary, quite literally out of their minds, like under the influence. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that too. But <laughs> one of my favorites is honestly, you have to repeat yourself a lot. Like a lot because oh, I'm sure. Probably the first medicine they're going to give you in your anesthesia cocktail is Versed, which is gives you amnesia, mm. so you're not going to remember a lot. We are oh, probably most that. maybe like one of the most forgotten nurses that like don't remember being <laughs> in PACU at all. Don't take which a is person. fine. It's all right. Um, but one, we have to remind them their surgery is over a lot for a lot of patients. They'll wake up and they'll be like, "When's the surgery?" I'm like, "It's over. It's all it's, <laughs> the surgery's over," and they're like. What like, wait, surgery's what? over? I'm like, look at your look at your arm. It's done. And they they like can't believe it. Fall back to sleep. Wake up one more time. When's the surgery? Yeah. <laughs> Ten second time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Aww. exactly. And then we also do we do a lot of ortho surgeries. So mm-hmm. we're doing a lot of spinal anesthesia. So lots of patients waking up really coherent and doing great. And then they're like can't panic, panic panicking, panicking. Something. I don't have legs anymore. Where are my legs? What happened in the surgery? And I'm like oh my taking the covers off. I'm like, you have legs. I promise you have legs. <laughs> you have legs. They're right here. You they're just can't feel them. I'm touching them right now. They're, they're right here. Um, yeah, oh my gosh. A lot of stuff like that. I feel like another thing Pac, you might get the rep for is that like everybody somehow is nauseous, but that is a, that is not the case. People no. are nauseous, but like, no. They, we have things we can do for that. So yeah, <laughs> it may be the case for some, but not all. I, yeah, I think it probably, it's just, a, some people have never had surgery before right. and they're just yeah. like very naive to, mm-hmm. you know, anesthesia and all of the effects. Totally. I would be that way. I, feel I like would probably I would be, be nauseous, but, but a lot, the majority aren't. <laughs> yeah. Which is good. That's good. Yeah. I want to know what are, <laughs> what are some of your favorite stories or memorable moments from the PACU? Well, gosh, I mean, it's always, like I said before, it's always memorable for me to tell somebody that they are done with surgery. That's like always just a sweet thing for me, especially when people are like really anxious. We do a lot of like, you know, cancer related surgeries and like to get, I've gotten to tell, like, I remember a sweet lady who had, she was like a mom of a bunch of kids with a brain tumor and, um, you know, this, the surgeon's not at the bedside. So when I get a report of them saying like, um, they got it and they, they thought it was gonna be worse and it wasn't. And like, they, you know, they were all really relieved. It looked really, you know, um, for like me to get to tell her mm. that is like such a sweet, it's such a sweet moment. And she was really tearful and just like wanted to hold my hand and it's really super sweet moments like that. I love that. I have also gotten proposed to a few times from, <laughs> <laughs> You know, at this point, they can only see, like, this much of my face anyway, (laughs) so, but, like, so sweet. I could be a lunatic under here. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know, what is it? Is it my (laughs) running mascara a little bit, or? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Um, Yeah, that's that's probably a winner. Definitely (laughs) makes you stop in your tracks a little bit. Like, um... I'm sorry I'm married, but that's nice. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh. yeah. We'll blame it on the anesthesia. Yeah. <laughs> what did COVID look like last year for you guys? I know there was a moment there where like there was no surgeries happening and mm-hmm. did they have to furlough staff and like surgical staff? I know that was happening in yeah, we where did. I was at. We didn't do non-essential surgeries, um, which is sort of like, what's a non-essential surgery? You know, like our <laughs> ORs weren't closed. We we did surgeries, yeah. um, 
I feel like you could make a case for a lot of things being essential. So we did a fair amount of surgeries actually, but, um, yeah. because everybody <clears throat> in our unit is, te- is critical care cert- certified basically, or, you know, we mm. are trained in the level of ICU care. Um, our hospital at least took a couple of our nurses and more or less floated to the ICU, mm. um, as things were getting really, wild and hairy. And then, um, nobody, nobody got furloughed. That was, that was great, but, um, That's they good. did keep a good handful of nurses to, to do PACU care. Um, mm. cause we still were doing a good amount. And then, yeah, some people had to kind of like go here or there, or like, you know, mm-hmm. work different units or, um, but that is not the case anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We want to really jump into PACU in COVID times. Things have changed a fair amount. Um, I mean, we're, we're back to doing the same amount of surgeries we would normally do. Um, yeah. but that the one kind of bummer of COVID is there's just not, um, there's just not enough space, at least at our hospital for all the patients. And just cause you're coming mm-hmm. in to have surgery that day doesn't mean they've reserved a bed for you necessarily. So we're keeping, oh, gosh, you know, that's so much backup into the path. Yeah, you. It, it is, it can be. Um, so we will end up you know, where I was saying like, could be 30 minutes, could be two hours, Mm. um, could be all day and all night. If the ICU is full, we'll keep ICU patients. Um, we'll keep all patients, um, until they have a bed available. Um, so we're, we're holding a fair amount of ICU patients and maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe the ortho floor is full. So there's, they'll stay with us until um, it's available. So that's been kind of a hard change. Um, we don't have a lot of interaction with family to begin with. Um, Mm -hmm. we do send patients home like same day surgery. So we used to have them come in and go over, um, you know, discharge instructions, but we don't do that anymore. Um, nobody Mm -hmm. really comes in unless it's like a parent of a child. Um, so that's been a big change, but, um, yeah, mostly, mostly like I think PACU nurses were you so used to like two hours next patient, you know, like, yeah, go, 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 go that to have a patient for like eight hours. We're like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, and, so and like you said before, like, you know, you're like thinking about when you're in step down, how yeah. like you don't want to be totally taking care of the same yes. patient, like, you know, boarding people and you know, yes. that can probably seem like, oh gosh, I hope that that patient's not still there. Yes. Because yeah. yeah, after a while, like they're awake and they want to mm-hmm. be in totally. a real bed and not a stretcher. We're know? doing exactly what they're doing on the orthopedic floor, just down here with like a bunch of other people around, <laughs> like, no bathroom. Yeah. Like no, no like chair to sit in. It just, it just doesn't function well for that um, yeah. use, but um, it is what it is. It is. The other thing to deal with and like any other unit would deal with the same thing is like patients are really frustrated by that. I mean, rightfully so. Mm. Like you want to come in and have like the best care. You want to be in your yeah. room by yourself and just to like. You want everything just operating. Apologize, you know, you know and, and just. conditions. Yeah. And the family, families get upset about that too. Like you can't come down. We don't have walls. Like you can't, you know, we yeah. you, there's someone next to your you know, family, especially with COVID. So, um, that's when, that's been tough to like kind of navigate how to deal with. I mean, I would want to see my family member too. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's been tough. What do you think is some of the hardest parts of your job? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of my coworkers, at least right now, would say that being on call is probably the hardest part. I feel like a lot of mm-hmm. units do like mock, like mandatory on call. Um, we have to do like one weekend a month and um, 24 hours and two nights a month, but but it's on call. Once if you come in, they do the surgery. You don't stay. You you go home. You know, so it's not mm-hmm. like you're there for a 12 hour shift. Um, but, um, because people are staying overnight and, you know, we're doing, we're having a lot more backlog. The call, I think is becoming, you know, more often than not, you're coming in to stay for a while. Um, gotcha. okay. that's just a lot on top of what, what we've been doing, but that's kind of a unit related issue. And then also like a COVID related issue. Um, mm-hmm. hasn't always, hasn't always been that way. Um, 
Yeah, I think honestly, the coworkers that I've seen, we have a pretty low turnover rate. I feel like in most pack use because we feel like we have a good, um, are going to go like to CRNA school or go to be hmm. NP school. Um, I, I, I can't think of anyone that I've known that has gone back to another unit. Yeah. Um, so you so, feel like a lot, like the hardest parts of your job don't really like lead to people leaving yeah, pack you necessarily. Yeah. I don't, I don't really think so. I think they're, they're looking for, most people are looking for like the next most, I don't know, the next up thing or, mm-hmm. um, I think, I think PACU nurses could get, um, a little burnt out with the, just like the normal, I think the normal stuff that nurses are going through right now. It's just that like yeah. things, things are not what we want or what we used to know. And we kind of want that back and, mm. um, are looking forward to, you know, not having upset families and, um, yeah, yeah. Just a change of pace. Yeah. yeah. There is such a strong appeal to pack you right now though, and other procedural areas, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I know you're seeing a lot of nurses move from inpatient into PACU. Mm-hmm. What, in your opinion, do you think are the driving factors for that? Like other than, you know, as far, like nurses are always looking for a work-life balance. We talked yep. about that, you know, maybe they're looking for something less emotionally taxing, something that with yeah. a high rotation, like, you know, quick turnaround, you yes. just do your job and keep it moving. Yep. Um, is there any, like, what do you, what, like, you know, as far as ICU nurses that have, that have come to mm-hmm. the PACU this past year, like what has been the biggest driving factor for them coming? We've had a lot more than I've seen in my five years there. Um, I think, oh, gosh, it's hard cause I haven't gotten to work with them up there, but I kind of know from afar what they're dealing with. I think that the pace at which nurses are having to, um, like brush over these really hard human experiences Mm. is just not healthy for anybody. We're like, we, we wanted to do this because we wanted to care for people. And there's, for me, at least the worst feeling a nurse can feel is that like, I could have done more and I didn't get to because X, Y, and Z. Yeah, And like our X, Y, and Z is coming back around to like an A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There are so many things we have to do now, especially with COVID is like, we're not getting to get, give the best care. And I feel like that's like, you know, in like a really nursing way, like that's, we will, that's what we're here to do is really care for you the best way. And we're not able to do that. So that leaves you with the feeling when you go home of like, and and I like was giving report and I had to tell Mm -hmm. like everything I didn't get to and this was an issue and this was an issue and I'll come back tomorrow and see what the night shift has figured out and hope, yeah. hope she got that central line and hope she was able to like fix with his blood pressure and, you know, mm-hmm. and then you Walking come back and through do mud trying to do your job. That's yes. what I always like. I'm and just then you trying come back to, and do it again. Going through mud. Yeah. Yes. Um, I feel like that just is just breaking nurses hearts kind of, because that's what we're, we're in it for like these people. I mean, we're not here to like, we're not here to make like tons of money or like, you know, have a great, super awesome schedule. Like we're working long hours. (laughs) Yeah. We're working on holidays and it's cause we care for you, for you people. And, (laughs) and, and the world is making it tough. And, um, I, I feel like, the ICU nurses that I work with are like, I, I have to care for myself in a better way. Like I have to take care of myself and I know that I can't go home feeling these, like, just like, like, it's all against me, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah. I feel like there's so much to be said about the turnaround and pack you too. And the fact that I'm there's, I bet there's satisfaction in, in the mentality that like, you see a problem, you fix a problem yes. as opposed to like, you know, I mean, in the ICU nurses, a lot of times are stuck wondering if all of these, you know, time and effort and yeah. treatments and meds and labs totally. and tests like are really going to actually yes. save our patient's life. And it becomes really futile, you know, mm-hmm. it seems really futile. So I feel like, I mean, to ICU nurses, that could mm-hmm. really be a breath of fresh air to just come into this space where 
you see if our yes. problem, you fix the problem, like that's all you need to think about. Yes. You know, like on top of all of last year, it seems totally. like that would be really a big driving factor. It would. And, and, and like I said earlier, like the criteria just for our unit is so small is because the expectation is that other things will be dealt with in the units, which is unfortunate, mm-hmm. honestly, for the units. But I feel like part of my job, PACU's job is to like the CRNAs to like, their job is to set me up for success. And for me, like, I want to meet those criteria well, so that mm-hmm. when the patient gets up there, the nurse can say, Hey, how's it going? You're doing good. Surgery went great. Great. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. You know, someone's climbing out of their chair over here and I got to, you know, <laughs> so like that there, that's a really good point. Like having set good. expectations for your role. Right. They're very clean cut. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not like stuck getting, you know, a bunch of different like roles put on you. Cause you're right. the switchboard. And my little, like, oh, like I wish I could have done better is like, I really wish like I, I, if I know that like the patient's pain is like better, but not really where I want it to be, that's like my little nudge of like, oh, I wish I could have like gotten them up to their room, like feeling really good. But like, that's mm-hmm. it. It's not like, um, you know, and I didn't finish this and I didn't finish this and I didn't finish this. Like we have such a set thing. It's like, we have to finish it before they yeah. can leave <laughs> and they can't stay very long. <laughs> so yeah. we're, we're going boom, 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 boom. Um, and then sometimes we do get to hang out and chat chat with them because they don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that I hope that answered that question. I don't really yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, you know, you definitely did. I think, yeah, I know a lot of nurses that are thinking of moving to procedural areas, but it, like ICU nurses, but they're ICU nurses mm-hmm. like to their yes. core. Like hit they're on adrenaline junkies. The number one thing I hear is that you're going to lose your skills. You're going to lose yeah. your, yeah. So Speak to that. Um, that's true. You are going to lose some of your skills. Like we're not doing ECMO. We're not doing like CRRT. We're not doing like, but we are still like, if you're really thinking about like I specific ICU level skills, we're doing mm-hmm. plenty of drips. We're like every patient's on Neo in the OR. <laughs> every patient's doing yeah. propofol. Um, you know, cardine, we're, we're all stroke certified. So we're doing tons of cranies. We're, we're see- doing lots of neuro assessments. Mm-hmm. Plenty of people vented. We, we help with extubation, you know, we're still doing our own labs, you know, we're still putting in catheters if we need to. Yeah. Um, but then, so like we're, you're going to, you would probably lose a few skills that, you know, could be learned back if you wanted to go back to ICU, but I actually think your scope is going to be broader because yeah. Add, you know, specific to my hospital, add in some, some pediatric knowledge. That's like a yeah. totally other thing. And then well, that's supposed, cause there's like what, like six or more different types of ICUs. There's one yeah, PACU. Exactly. You know how to, uh, all of, all the things. Right. <laughs> so, so you, you're going to see it. You're going to see it a little less often than every single patient is an ICU patient. Um, but then you also are going to have to learn things like, you know, we're, we're learning about like orthopedic surgeries and what to look for with this or, Mm -hmm. you know, GYN surgery, how much bleeding is too much bleeding or like, um, just like a lot of different stuff too, that you, we won't maybe see, um, often in the ICU. So I think that's a probably misconception to, to point out is that, you know, you aren't going to, you won't stop learning, right? you know, like you, you always are seeing new things, which is Mm -hmm. a, benefit to being in the ICU. You're always learning and seeing new things. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I think, I think that's, I've heard that often, um, that you're going to, you're going to lose all these things that you know. And I just feel like, um, I, I didn't get to experience that necessarily, but, um, a lot of the nurses that I've worked with, like they're still, they're still there. So I feel like that's a good sign for the skills they've learned and maintained and, um, we, we take care of a lot of mm-hmm. ICU patients. So we have to, it's not like our first nature thing cause it's not every single patient, but, mm-hmm. um, that comes back to you, you know, all yeah. that information and we're setting up Ventrix and stuff like that. Like we're still doing <laughs> that kind of stuff every yeah. now and again. So it's almost like the ER too, or it's like, yes, sometimes you can is. have a, you know, totally. finger laceration and sometimes you can have like a huge cardiac arrest PE coding Super four similar. times. Yep. Patients right yeah. next to each other. 
<laughs> yeah, it's very similar <laughs> actually to the emergency room. Yeah. Do you feel like you have, are there ER nurses too that come from PACU or I mean, ER nurses that come to yeah. PACU? Not recently. Um, they probably should. They would probably be really good at it though. Um, yeah, they could I feel them. like on, honestly, something that I see that's an ER nurse would probably be great at is that um, you're really juggling and moving quickly. You're doing a lot of things at the same time and you have a couple patients. Um, I think I benefited that from my experience in step down where I would have like three, four, five patients sometimes. And you're just mm-hmm. like having to do all of it at one time. I actually think that's a really great skill for a PACU nurse. Whereas sometimes mm-hmm. in ICU, which is really great and necessary, you have your two patients, you're really focused. This is what you're mm-hmm. doing. You're chasing down every problem. You, you know, you're the last line of defense. So you're, you're following up on every little thing. Whereas mm-hmm. on the floor, it's like, you're doing the best you can with everything you've got. You kind of yeah. need a little bit of both for, I, for PACU because you really are juggling and moving fast, but then you got to know like the important things to like really think this isn't, mm, mm-hmm. this isn't right. I got to really like look into that. Um, yeah. So I feel like as a, if a nurse wanted to come to PACU without critical care experience, I would say do it because you can be taught, you can yeah. be taught anything. Time management, that's hard to learn. I mean, yeah. we all know a nurse that we work with that really struggles with time management. That's tough. And then, like, the personality to, like, really get along with an interactive team and, like, be able to, like, be... You, I literally sit next to my patient the whole time they're there. So, like, to be able to chit-chat... I do love that <laughs> when I'm getting report from Peggy. You have a question, you're like, I don't know. chit When was the last time you had a bowel movement? Like, Gary? Like, <laughs> totally. Yeah, I like, it. right next to... I'm like, oh, you're in there. Okay. That's one of my favorite parts. I'm like, so tell, give me some good marriage advice, Mr. Jones. You know, or like, you know, while I'm on the, I'm on hold. What did you do for a living? Tell me about that. Yeah, like, you know, um, yeah. I I feel like Love those that. things you can be taught how to like manage event, but you mm-hmm. you can't be taught to like, you know, have have the skills to like carry on a cam- conversation with someone for two hours or like. <laughs> really be juggling them and another patient and be getting them out the door in an mm-hmm. hour, you know? So mm-hmm. I feel like that's important. Yeah. So you're not yeah. going to lose, you're not going to lose skills. No. I mean, you'll, you're going to have a huge variety of, I think so. of skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I feel like this whole thing was like a commercial for the PACU. Oh, yeah. It's, but you know, when we, like, I know nurses people, that are really going to love this. I hope so. This. Cause when I orient people, I'm like, I just want you to know, I'm kind of like the Packy's biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> so if you couldn't already tell, <laughs> I think your job here is a good idea. <laughs> uh, oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, I hope it gives people a good idea and yeah. I hope there's not Packy nurses being like, what is she talking about? <laughs> no, I think that, I think you did it justice. Uh, you did Packy good. justice. I hope so. Well, I think we're going to end it here. Right. Thank you so much for You're coming welcome. on and talking so about Packy with me today. So I'm glad to do it. Yeah. All right. Well, we will talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good. Bye. That brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in to Nursing Uncharted. To learn more about today's episode, make sure to explore the show notes at AmericanMobile.com slash Nursing Uncharted. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a guest. If you're a nurse interested in traveling, visit AmericanMobile.com to explore the largest database of travel nursing jobs in the industry and the amazing benefits that American Mobile has to offer. Also, a special thanks to producer Jonathan Carey, assistant producers Katie Schrauben and Sam McKay, and Aiden Dykes for the music and editing. Until next time, take care of yourself.